Welcome to the Buck Brief, everybody. Our friend David Harsanyi back in action here. He is a senior columnist at The Federalist. He's got an awesome new book coming out, uh, Rise of Blue Anon, How the Democrat Party Became All About Conspiracy Theory, uh, which I think is very uh, troubling and an important development in American politics. I want to start with this because you detailed this uh, recently. You, you went into this. They did it to, they did it to J.D. Vance. This thing, explain this tactic of the Democrat media where they, like, something random appears somewhere on the internet that is obviously slanderous or deeply undermining and destructive to a Republican. And then it's like, well, we need to bring on the experts to to go into detail about whether this crazy thing that no one actually believes or should believe is true is true. You know what I mean? It'd be like, if I said it, I'm like, hey, p- some people are saying David Harsanyi is actually a lizard person. You take off his face and he's a lizard and he eats puppies. Let's just let's bring on some some experts, some zoologists to decide like they do that for real, though, with Republicans. How does this work? I'll give you a famous example, which is the Trump key tape. Right. So there's no evidence for that. They could find no evidence for that. So they talk about it in a way they'll talk about it like, um, you know, people are saying this, but it's not true or whatever. They What they're doing is letting those who d- have never heard the conspiracy know that it exists, whet their appetite for it in a way. So either they'll, they give conspiracy, it, it, there's essentially no conspiracy theory on the left that isn't giving, given some kind of hearing on the right, on the, in, in the main major media, you know, either they're going to talk to someone who's, who's spreading it, or they're going to debu- uh, fact check it and debunk it, but let you know about it. Um, and that's one of the many tactics they use to let people know all the conspiracies that are going on out it, there. It, it doesn't make sense. It, it, there's the old thing in, I guess, in politics or maybe just life in general. You know, when did you stop beating your wife? The point, of course, being they're just right. trying to assert that you are a wife beater. And even when you deny it, they've injected this with. Cons- I feel like with conspiracy theory about Republicans in particular from from the the Democrat mindset. This stuff is is a constant where and, and they'll do really in like CNN will do in-depth reporting on something. And I sit there and I say the whole point of the I mean, Russia collusion is the whole thing. I think a good example of this, that was just one big indulgence of a conspiracy that was flimsy and absurd. But by talking about it, they were undermining a political opponent. Right. So it, it just feels like they play this double game all the time. Oh, we're journalists. But like, let's talk about this crazy stuff for a while. But we're doing it as serious journalists. Yeah. I mean, that's what my book's about. It lays out how we got to where we are, the history of it. Um, when do you think this started? Like, like tell me about this. Like, when, when did when did the Blue Anon conspiracy stuff, is it really a Trump era thing, or do you go a little earlier than that? Trump sort of blew it up, but I go all the way back to the Clintons. Uh, I start with Hillary going on Good Morning America and saying, you know, there's this big conspiracy theory right. against her. So every time she says something is a conspiracy theory, it turns out to be true, but the reverse is never true. So I I, I put it like this. They've been doing this for a long time, but here's the difference between the right wing conspiracy theorists and the left wing and the right. Let's not pretend that right wingers don't get caught up in that. Everyone does. It's that they will polish it off, will produce it, will calibrate it to be somewhat plausible. We'll give it, we'll find people who work for, you know, uh, institutions that we're supposed to respect, the media or the government, to spread it. And that is much more dangerous because it's it has a far wider reach and has far more plausibility and far more, uh, you know, power when you have like the ex, you know, director of the CIA saying, yeah, the Russians are definitely involved or whatever it is, you know. It's not like Alex Jones or someone just yelling on YouTube about, you know, some some lizard people or whatever they talk about. Yeah. That's a difference. That's what I would expect a lizard person who eats puppies to say, David. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> true, well, like, true. You know, it's it's amazing that you could sit here and and go back and look at some of the the Democrat conspiracies that have become so. I mean, they obviously I know there's very passionately held beliefs about the 2020 election and what was fair and what wasn't. But to me, in an election like people manufacturing votes to steal an election, let's just say that has happened. I mean, anybody, for example, who's familiar mm-hmm. with, you know, LBJ and, you know, like there has been ballot stuffing. These are real things that have happened. And there were, uh, let's just say, excessive liberties taken with some state laws in 2020. 
uh, breaking state laws, I think, clearly in 2020 in order to help Democrats vote wise. And then there's some other stuff that people bring up that, you know, they don't have evidence for, but they have a feeling for. But it's not crazy. Like to think that Donald Trump was on a tape with Russian prostitutes who were urinating on him, which let's just be honest, that that is what, you know, the PP tape, that was what the and for BuzzFeed to launder that through CNN and the intelligence community to launder or, you know, to launder it with the help of the guy, Christopher Steele, who did. I mean, this stuff is insane. Like, this is just there's yeah. just no basis in reality for any of this. And this was reported on the biggest news networks for years. Well, I think it's like for years and years, there's been this paranoia building up about Republicans. They're they're fascists. They're Hitler. There's no more debating. There's just accusations. So when you prime people up in that way, you're going to start to believe the worst things about them. So that, that's how this Russia thing, I think, um, really infiltrated the the mindset of a lot of people. And I actually think many people believed it. You know, I remember that poll. There were like 64 yes. percent of Democrats thought like ballots had been changed or whatever yes. the number was. I know, that, that there, there was but like hacking be... of the voting machines by the Russians to change yeah. votes. Right. Wild stuff. Right. I, yeah. I mean, there were st- when you go back and read about it now, you're like, this is the most insane thing that has ever happened in American politics. People believe that the president of the United States was an asset for a another country. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, Jonathan Chait wrote an 8,000 word piece in New York magazine talking about how he had been an asset since 1987. Like they lost their minds and it's because they're, they're paranoid about their political opponents. And if it was Ron DeSantis, who is the presidential n- nominee now, they would go in some different direction and say he was, you know, he wanted Floridians to die during COVID or whatever say, did, it is. Did they you would see find some of something. the, some of the stuff where, you know, I mean, yeah, Trump is Hitler. But Ron DeSantis is worse than Trump. Therefore, Ron DeSantis, for a few months there, worse than Hitler. It was pretty amazing. I was like, how How do you go yeah. there? What is the worse than Hitler on the dial? Like, where, where does that even, how does that happen? <laughs> it's nowhere to go. <laughs> it, was, it, was, yeah, it was wild. But like, yeah. I just want to say that you made the point about how um, sometimes you can believe conspiracies, I think, because there's a lack of transparency or people are kind of egging you on to believe it, like the birther thing, in my opinion. But the Secret Service stuff, for instance, there's such a lack of transparency. It's so mind blowingly incompetent that people are going to start to believe crazy things. And I don't actually blame people in that case for believing that something weird is going on. I'm not saying there is, but I don't blame them. Well, I mean, this is when people I mean, on the on the Epstein stuff, for example, I'm like, I don't know all the answers about who ran the conspiracy or anything, but I know that there's stuff that it would be irrational to believe was a coincidence. That's where Ep- some of the Epstein stuff goes, like whether it's the FBI not taking evidence when they're actually searching his house. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. Um, but I, I, I have a theory. I don't know if you I haven't read the book yet. You got to send me a copy. Uh, actually, I'll buy mm-hmm. it because I like to support your work. I'll buy a copy of the book. Blue Anon, <laughs> the rise of Blue Anon, everybody. Um, but in the meantime, I, I want to throw a theory your way. But first up, um, I'm a firearms guy. David wrote a book on the Second Amendment, actually, and guns. Um, Bear Creek Arsenal is our sponsor, and they're amazing. Uh, they make top quality firearms at the best possible prices. I've got the nine millimeter Grizzly, which is Bear Creek Arsenal's model. It's all their own stuff too, right? I mean, they're they're designing them, manufacturing them, and they bring them right to you. They'll sell them to you off the website. Goes to your FFL, you pick it up there. Great quality firearms at unbeatable prices, and uh, they're a great company too of American patriots who really believe in the Second Amendment. This isn't some foreign company that's like afraid to you know, advertise in the American market that they sell guns. There's a lot of that stuff going on. Learn more about bearcreekarsenal.com slash buck. Go to bearcreekarsenal.com slash buck. Use promo code buck, 10% off your first order. Bearcreekarsenal.com slash buck, promo code buck for 10% off. David, I have a theory I want to throw your way. Is the problem that conspiracies are just inherently more interesting to people and therefore it is just clickbait all the time? Any conspiracy I can come up with, if I'm willing to like, put my reputation in some jeopardy. I guess no one cares about these things anymore, but I'll get clicks, right? I mean, you know, my li- my lizard, per- if I went all in on the lizard person story that, you know, you like eat bunny rabbits and you're actually a lizard or whatever, people would click on it. They might think I'm insane, but, you know, I feel like that has an effect. And that happens a lot now, especially on, on Twitter or X because it's monetized. So the more like cra- the crazier you are, the more people are going to click on your stuff, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a. I think people who are people who are feel powerless sometimes, or in the Democrats' case, people who lose power and want it so badly, or are, are you know they want to have some explanation for it. They can't just simply 
let's talk about 9-11. Like people have all these these theories, but like, why wouldn't they believe that a bunch of Islamists who promised to do something would actually do it? Or why can't they believe that Kennedy was killed by a commie who went to the Soviet Union and who came from Cuba? People want to think that the world is more complex, There's that there's these dark, that there are dark forces working behind the scenes to undermine them in some way or undermine the country. And it's just, like you say, a better story, more interesting. Right. Well, this is this is it. the problem. And I, I always say this and people are like, well, you're the CIA. So it's exactly what they would expect the CIA, <laughs> guy, to say, CIA guy to say. Yeah. Um, but I, I look at them. I'm like, I, I promise to anyone out there of the CIA conspiracies that people have heard, whether it's like, oh, like, you know, MK Ultra or like JFK stuff or whatever. Ninety five, maybe ninety nine percent of that. What, what all that's going on is actually sloth indifference and incompetence of a massive federal bureaucracy like i I know that that sounds almost impossible to people but it it really like there are these places are not staffed with it's not james bond over there okay i work there maybe maybe people admit that because i were it's it's people doing a job a lot of them are you know not really held to particularly high standards there are some awesome people at the cia and the fbi and whatever and there are a lot of uh schmoes i think i can say that on the radio right schmoes I'm in New York, yeah. we just call them schmoes. So uh, there's a lot of that too, and I just feel like that's never something that gets people. Um, th- that doesn't get them as excited, I, so you don't hear about that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are such incompetent people working in government. We see it every day. There, there, it's filled with people who are just ridiculously incompetent. Well, and then you're I, telling I me all these people, people got. To- I, I mean, David, <laughs> imagine if your job you had, you know, because like y- you write, right? So people buy your books or they don't. You write articles, people click on your articles, and read them or they don't. There's advertising and, and other things, you know, obviously books, it's just people pay for them. Imagine if your job, you had no metrics, no incentives, and no individual responsibility whatsoever. Welcome to working for the federal government. Like, And you have a union to protect you, so you could never and be you fired. And you get fired. I, I try right. to tell people this, and they don't, you know, they're like, oh, like, you know, CIA stooge is stooging for the CIA. I'm like, no, this is the truth. And the CIA is like... The elite of the federal government. The CIA is is the Harvard of federal government agencies. Like, there's a lot. You go lower down the chain. People are like, oh, could they really be like this? Could ATF really screw this up that badly? You know, talking about Operation Fast and Furious. <laughs> yes. the The answer is yes. Like anyway, I know, and I know people don't want to hear that, but these places, there's a lot of dumb, and there's no accountability. The place where I agree, people getting angry about is on the no accountability because they're, you know, you mentioned the thing about getting fired, but. Even the Secret Service, it's like Secret Service directors resign, and it's only because they just made such a mess of it. But nobody else over there is going to get fired. Nothing else is going to happen. Person's going to go work at the Brookings Institution totally. or someplace and make a ton of money. Like they, it doesn't really even matter. Yeah. It's like in Afghanistan, thirteen Americans were killed. Not one person lost a job. You know, and the Secret Service thing, like the, you have literally one job on Earth, and that is to protect yeah. these politicians, and you don't, and then you. It was pretty hard to get that woman to resign, he, right? You know, a little a little while back, um, David, P, the, the the FBI director said something about shra- like they weren't sure if Trump got shot or if it was shrapnel. What the hell is that? Oh, right. Did, did you see? Oh, you haven't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, the FBI director was like, we don't know if it was a bullet or shrapnel. I'm like, bullets don't. I've never heard of a bullet making shrapnel before. I mean, I guess you could try to say a round could skip off something, and but that's just a bullet right like you're a gun guy right yeah aer 15 how far was that guy 150 yards it was like some incredibly easy shot to take honestly i mean that was not with eight right he got off eight rounds the chance of me hitting a human-sized target in a vital area at 150 yards even with steel sights which i think they're not saying he had at 150 yards is 100 percent. 100 percent. i mean even i even i would even i could do that yeah, this is what I'm saying is like, it's not, I mean, a one round, okay, you're nervous, you know, because you're like a lunatic assassin. Like, I get it, right? Eight shots. Um, and the whole thing strikes me as like, David, we'll come back. I want you to tell everybody about your uh, about your book here in just one second, where they can go to get it. But a good friend of mine, Porter Stansberry, uh, he did something really interesting. He cut his salary to a dollar a year. You might be like, well, who is this guy? He started a uh, massive financial research company, one of the biggest and best in the entire country. Uh, that does hundreds of millions in revenue a year. He's the founder and chairman. Why would he pay himself a dollar? He says there's something called a secret currency, something that you can benefit from as well. And he wants you to learn about how to use this secret currency to your advantage. It's not gold or Bitcoin. 
Porter says every American is legal entitled, legally entitled to use this, but few know very much about it. So if you want to grow your wealth in the years to come and protect your money while inflation is chipping away at everything, you need to go check out secretcurrency2024.com. That's secretcurrency2024.com. Don't wait. Go check out what Porter Stansbury has to say at secretcurrency2024.com. David, I love all your books. By the way, I've blown people's minds with the stat. I always credit you for it about about how uh, England on a per capita basis is poorer than Mississippi, the poorest U.S. state. People are people check, and I'm like, go check out Eurotrash, David's book. Um, so so I'm, I'm selling books on the side oh, here for you, too. That. But, uh, I appreciate that. Of course. But Rise of Blue Anon, just tell people it's coming out. When? When can they get it? Rise of Blue Anon, How Democrats Became a Party of Conspiracy Theorists. It comes out in the fall. So uh, I just felt like I had to start talking about it. Well, when are we doing pre orders, my man? Pre orders? We're doing that right now. Office? Anyone can okay. go to Amazon, Barnes and anywhere they sell books should go be there. Pre order it. And I would appreciate the, the support because all pre orders go into the first week sales and maybe I can get on a list. And fantastic. We're going to do what we can. Team Buck yeah. is on it. David Harsanyi, <laughs> one of our originals. Great to see you, man. Thanks and congrats on the book. Thanks. Thanks as always.